Welcome back to the WCS Challenger League with Calderon Wolf, and things are things have been pretty good today. You know, we had some really intense matches, especially the last Pro Wrestlers for us watched. Yeah, uh, really exciting. Pick Baby, of course, advancing to face Reality in round three. Yep, <clears throat> not up against Fantasy. He has to face Reality here, and that might mean that he is going to be one of the participants in the up and downs if he cannot take his opponent down here. But yeah, we're going into our last game, and it is going to be a good one. We have the Afro Toss going up against the formerly curly haired Coca, now part of Genia Green Wings, not part of Slayers anymore since they disbanded, of course, and he took a bit of a hiatus there. I yep. was thinking to himself, what? Slayers is down, lol, and then he was back to StarCraft 2 where he belongs. It's where he belongs, and uh, you know, the funny thing is, I felt like, you know, we talked about this a lot. Coco left, like, in his prime. It was kind of strange. Now he looks back stronger than ever. Uh, I mean, in the, in the games I've seen and what people are telling me, he's in really good shape right now. Paralyze, on the you other know, hand, has a really crazy afro. I actually think that the reason uh, why Coca. I think the reason why Coke actually left back then when he was on uh, his peak was because he wasn't ready for, for all those girls and the money. I don't think that he was really ready for it. I mean, he couldn't handle it. He was pretty young back then. And he was like, well, if I get famous right now and I win the next three GSLs in a row and like get all that money, that 30 esports money, and then also like all those girls, I can't handle that. I, I need a little bit of a break here. So he took some time. Now he's ready for it and he wants to go to the Premier League. So does the Afrodos. Who's going to take game one? At the WCS Challenger League here in Korea. Here he is at the top. Kind of the odd man out today. He's not a Protoss. He is, in fact, Jin Air Green Wings Coca. The only Zerg today to play. Yeah. For Jin Air Green Wings, for Carrigan and the Swarm, we have him going up against the Protoss player. The Afrotoss starting to the bottom of Polar Knight. SK Telecom T1 Paralyzed. Paralyzed in this matchup. 50% win ratio, roughly. Same as Coca. So, in terms of statistics, evenly matched, but not a whole lot of games recorded for both players. So, it's going to be a really interesting match to, uh, to see now. And I can't wait to see what's going to happen here. We have seen Paralyze several times attempting to go into the Challenge League, and uh, he's currently in the second round here, so both of them are safe. We'll at least go to the up and downs. Coca, on the other hand, the people who everyone expected to take a GSL at some point and uh, win it. But right now he has to fight his way back into the Premier League. Yep. And he might be able to do that, but it's going to be an interesting, uh, very interesting game. Not only because it's the first time today that we see a Zerg vs. Protoss. Exactly. Um, Paralyze is someone we've seen in StarCraft 2 uh, very little, I feel. You know, he's he's been around. He's showed some really cool builds in Pro League. He's played uh, in the studio before as well. But there's, there's nothing about Paralyze that stands out. As, as like you look at him you're like yeah this is his style and this is how he does except this except for his hair except his hair yeah that does thank you for pointing that out because uh, I think a lot of people do not know why he has a nickname Afrotoss it's because he has basically an afro um, it's not because he likes afros or that he once <laughs> had an afro wig it's because of his actual hair that resembles an afro slightly that's where he gets his nickname well, with the base coming down here now for Coca, and also, of course, the pool, and with the timing that he has here, he can start his speed fairly early. We have, on the other hand, for Paralyze, the opening of the gateway here, and from the positioning, this looks like the old days, where you actually just take the wall at the natural, uh, sorry, at the uh, at the ramp, and then uh, you deny access to the main base, and you just go for the 4K. Very unlikely that we're going to see that right now. But yeah, it reminds us of the old days. Yeah, the old days, exactly. We've been talking about this a little bit, because every now and then you do see that really fast uh, gateway wall. And he's actually going to cut all production and make a Nexus. So, super fast Nexus here, a great choice against the abilities of scene. With a fast speed coming out for Coca, though, could easily be punished. Yeah, the fast speed here, giving him a lot of flexibility, especially against incoming attacks, and that's one of the things that you want to have against an uh, opening with a gateway. You want to have those speed links, but at the same time, he can use it very aggressively. We've seen this in the, the recent matches here at the Challenger League. So, the problem that you have if you go for this aggression is that usually the Mothership Core is there, and once that Nexus completes the Mothership uh, with a or photo and overcharge, it's just going to do so much damage. But you can bait it out quite easily with you have enough Zerkings. But I, I kind of it's a little bit unlike that he's really going to commit this many lava to Link. So. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure. He could do it. He hasn't seen a wall yet. 
Uh, he's making three more drones, and I think at this point he would have needed to start his links already if he really wants to be aggressive here. He doesn't have the overlords, and he goes for a third base. Yeah, third hatchery started. Stargate goes down just out of vision of the overlord, so he's not going to see that until his ling runs up, that is to say. In which case, he clicks on it, knows immediately what's up, and is going to be able to react accordingly, get some spores. Third has been spotted, which is important here. Paralyzed knows exactly what he's up against, he knows exactly about the timing. And we have the overlord so far, just trying to go to the left side of the map, trying to escape whatever comes out of that Stargate. Most likely, of course, going to see a couple of phoenixes here. And the Zerglings are still active on the map for Coca, like running around everywhere and looking for that one pylon that can meet uh, that can mean the end of the game. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely mean at the very least uh, the end of a third base a lot of the time. You know, I, I could see an Oracle here. We've seen a lot of players using Oracles recently, but it's just not too successful. And there's the Phoenix, as expected. Yeah. Phoenix trying to go for the Overlord hunting, of course, and both Overlords still trying to escape. He actually comes back, has a bit... This is not this is not an Overlord, this is actually an Emo Lord. He wants to die, so he goes straight for the Phoenix, and is like, please take me down, my life is really sucks, I want to die. No. And I'm I feel, an Overlord, like, you wouldn't understand, yeah. you're not an Overlord. This is an Emo Lord, and I mean, the Phoenix is gonna grant, is gonna grant that vision. Yeah. Now he's having second thoughts, but it's too late. It's too late. Like, just look at him. He's really sad. He's just hanging there. He's completely, you know, like really sad and like, uh, fine, kill me. See if I care. <laughs> I can't kill anything, anyways. I'm just hovering here. I might as well just not have even been uh, created at the hatchery. Okay, so Emo Lord down and therefore also no scouting information at the natural anymore. We have another Overlord to the bottom right that has just been spotted and it will also die. Yeah, that's, uh, that Overlord was actually pretty content with his life. He was, uh, you know, he just re recently met a new girl, he got a new job, and you know, he's like, yeah, I got the new job, They're looking at the top left, that's my job, and he was really good at it, but it just doesn't matter. You know, he has a really keen eye for overlords on the map, Paralyzed that is. He found so far every single one of them, even when they were a little bit hidden, so good job so far. Took down, I think, three in total, with the Phoenixes still roaming the map, and he really makes sure that there is no vision for Koka, and that's so important as a Protoss player. If you can make that happen, then uh, the Zerg is definitely in a much more uncomfortable position. But we can also see the mechanics of Koka here. He has decent creep spread, already connected those bases. It's not on a Scarlet level, but definitely that that's, gives him a lot of safety and a little bit more flexibility defending against air units since the Queens just need creep if they want to go from base to base. Yeah, and he's, he's going to be able to defend these Phoenixes really well when it comes to the main bases. The Fear Pomp Ram, of course, being the overloads that he lost earlier on really causing him some production problems. We have a robotics bay coming up here, so Colossi are next on the menu. But the thing is, he doesn't have a third, which is actually pretty unusual for Protoss players these days to go two base Colossi. Usually if you see it, it's for a timing attack. I don't know, I, I wonder what he's going to do with this. He's really struggling to take that third Nexus there. Yeah, there's the third, and we have Hydras coming into play now. So one of the things that you can really bait out with our Phoenix is of course the Hydras, and then you go into Colossa. But look at how many units he kills here. Really good micro, oh my god, Paralyze. Such great micro up to the point where he loses a Phoenix for nothing. Yep. That was he could have done that better, but really nice how he snipes all of those harvesters and goes straight for the overlords. He's always dancing around the edges, making sure that units that are attacked are being pulled back. If not for that one Phoenix loss, that would have would have been a massive win for him. Yep. This roach attack here might be a massive win for Koka as he forces these uh, sentries to use their force fields. He does target one down. Great force fields on the other hand by Paralyzed. He's actually not able to break through. Now he gets in. Will kill the sentries. The cannon. Almost complete here. Yeah, but the cannon is not the problem. The, the, the Nexus is not going to finish. He's going to lose this. Yeah. I don't think he can really hold it. Oh, maybe now with the Phoenix. Well, the, the Zerglings are also kind of stuck in that choke point where they're not trading very well. Yeah, now they're trading a whole lot better. Hive Tech already started, and that Nexus might go down. He's going to go for it immediately, trying to take it out, but it's not It's not going to happen there at this point. But there are so many units streaming across the map, but it's the Colossus that saves the day. Yeah, he needs, for a, he needs to turn around here. Right? He's sending so many units and I don't think that's gonna it's gonna pay off for him. It was just almost enough, but not quite. He stressed him out for sure. Like he has his high tech already halfway completed and Hydralis is now. The overlord here with the wrong waypoint, another emo lord just going down. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna take all the army by myself. I don't care about my life. Now, he actually got the memo just right now that the other emo lord killed himself by just moving into the Phoenix. So it was like, okay, where was that? Bottom left? Alright, I'm on my way. 
those teenager overlords, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, once again. Wow, he got uh, a lot of kills there. He Think does that so well with the Phoenixes. Yeah, he, he knows exactly where to have them. He has five, usually, in a group. And that can just do so much. He kills the drum so quickly. Gotta be careful about losing the Phoenixes. Saved it that time. You know, the, the awkward thing for Koka in this game was really his uh, his tech, where he got the Hydras. He got the Hydralis Den after the bay was like almost finished. So that's, you know, you never want to have that be the order of things. But now, he, realizing what's happening, he goes for Vipers here. And with Vipers and Colossi, to, or uh, Hydras together, you can actually fight Colossi. It is doable. Bit of a... Yeah, Koka actually with the Hydras could have killed one or two of the Phoenixes if he would have moved in before attacking. But he fends them off for now. Bottom right, we have a base there that is now being established for Koka, who also gets a macro hatch. Really important. A lot of players these days are skipping this a bit and then losing the fourth base and also the production capability. He could actually snipe a Viper. There's no Hydras nearby. I think he has enough energy for him to use. I'm not 100% sure. I think you're right. And actually, I love that. Paralyzed already realizing that that was probably not going to work, just goes for drones instead. I, that's just, for me, I look at that and I'm like, wow, that's actually really a good decision because most people will be looking at that going like, ooh, I'm getting that Viper, like seeing, you know, like a treasure chest of, of gas that could be killed by killing the It's Viper. a carrot on a stick right there. Yeah. And if you move in too far, the stick is going to hit you. But in this particular scenario, that was not the case. The problem is that he's going to be hit pretty soon by this army that moves to the bottom left. And with the Vipers there, they could go for the Yanks immediately, just boing them in. And I don't know, like, this is pretty scary, especially with all of the Phoenixes suddenly gone since they just flew right over that army. I... I mean, the army supply is massive for Koka. 132 to 64, that's more than double his opponent's army supply, but... I just don't... I don't actually think that this is gonna work down that ramp against the gateway wall. It's the High Templar that really uh, makes yeah. it happen for Paralyzed. If he gets the feedbacks against the Vipers, then uh, those Colossi are gonna shred this army. But that's the question of positioning. That's what it's about. Here come the Vipers. He saw the High Templars. Blinding Cloud is already there. Good one. He can't move into that, oh but he god. might have to. Koka's control is so good here. The look Blinding at Cloud. Oh my god. He's making it look easy here. Pulls the Colossus in. Oh god. This is so good. He puts the Blinding Cloud where, down where the army will be and not where it is. Snipes and Another Colossus and moves in, but the defense on the other hand for Paralyzed is also good. Three Colossi are still alive, but the Nexus is sniped and goes down. And Koka moves back. He knows he's on four bases against two now, and he is absolutely happy with losing a few units to achieve he this. He has a fourth base. He has Hive Tech. To be totally honest with you, Calder, I think this is the best timing attack I've seen on a Paralysis third base ever. I mean, the execution there, the arc on his units, the preemptive blinding cloud that you mentioned, making it where the units will be, not yep. where they are. Exactly. He puts them into the spot. He knows exactly that the army will have to move there if he wants to save that Nexus. He pulls all of the Vipers to the left side to make sure that there are no feedbacks. There were High Temples, but we didn't see a single feedback. Koka with really good control in this battle. Just the arc that he had made it so the Prost Army had to go to that exact place where the Blinding Cloud was. And he was like, yeah, just come at me. And not only will I have the Blinding Cloud there, but that's only going to protect my Vipers when I come forward for the Yanks. Beautiful execution on that. Problem being, he lost a lot of units. And now he just has to make sure that there's no fourth base for Paralyzed. If he can keep that the case and continue to get his upgrades out, he will be in the better spot. Right now he's going to try to snipe some Templar. One storm goes down, but against Roaches, that's not ideal. Yeah, he's moving in again, and there are just not enough force fields. Here comes the Blinding Cloud, and he yanks them in. One of the Vipers goes down, the other one are moving in and yanking whatever they can. Colossal number two immediately being attacked by Koka is forced back for now, but he is accumulating this bank and just re- building his army he can go for the upgrades here coca is definitely putting paralyzes into a corner the way coca is playing this matchup right now he's making it look like a zerg player is supposed to fight colossi with just hydro roach i mean even without the viper yanks with the blinding cloud and the way he's approaching the uh, engagements he's making it look like the zerg is the one who's supposed to be calling the shots in these late game battles which is not normally how it is actually in this matchup he's going again the pro army just a little bit too small here i feel well, he's moving in now. He's going for that Yankee. He wants to get close enough, and he's really close. Here comes the High Temple on the other hand. Goes for the feedback. But Beautiful another grab. Viper moves in and grabs that Colossi. Pulls it into the army. Really nice control here by Koka. Paralyzed is doing what he can. Nice control on his own High Templars. Trying to get close enough to the Viper, but Koka already sees it. 
pulls us back, and here comes the Zerg player going for the move, trying to take down this army and win game one. There's only one Colossus, you know, it's not enough. There's way too much DPS on those Hydras. He grabs the Colossus again. Every grab so beautifully done and paralyzed. Looks like he is going to be down for the count in game number one. GG. GG and game. Koka taking it in such a great game. Both players with really good moves here, but Koka very very controlled. Everything that he did had so much control, his unit control, the map control that he has, how he built up his spaces. He was the one always moving on the map and you could see that Paralyze just got... He didn't really get a position on the map. He was he just too defensive. He was always on the defensive. Watching Koka play that game just felt like I was watching something I've never seen before, like a, a new matchup entirely. I mean, that play was inspirational even to me. Just the the way he engaged that third base yeah. could not have been better. No way, no how. That was perfect. How he took control of the map was definitely sexy as hell. That was really good. I mean, the entire game, he was not the one who got attacked. He defended against the Phoenixes, but he forced his opinion, uh, his um, opponent into very weird positions. So Koka, great game here. Paralyzed, I loved his Phoenix control. I really liked it. Uh, he was a little bit unlucky when he sent his units back to the... Uh, back to his own base and uh, unfortunately flew over Koka's army and lost all of the Phoenixes. So that was definitely a bit of a bummer there for him. Yeah. That might have been one of the things with a good flank by the Phoenixes that could have taken down the Viper or two. As is, though on the other hand, relying on the High Templars alone didn't really do the trick since Koka was so... Uh, he was just so meticulous about keeping them safe. Yeah, and Paralyzed just having a, a third base that was very safe, but a little bit late. Um, and his defense of the third base was good. It was just that con Koka's control was, was better. It was just excellent the way he did it. It made it look like Paralyze had no chance to defend that third base. Akalon Waste, though, a very much better map for Paralyze to take a fast third. And I think we're probably going to see actually a, a little bit of a longer game on this one. If Paralyze goes to that fast third and goes airplay. And I I'm actually looking forward to seeing how Koka is going to respond if that is the case. Yeah, I actually think if, uh, if something like this happens, Koga is going to go for power timings here. But I definitely want to see the next game. His play is just really inspirational. It always was. And then he suddenly, I mean, I still can't believe that he back then decided that it was time to leave StarCraft. I'm glad he's back. I'm really happy about that. And we are going into game number two. Let's see what the Afrotoss can do against Curly Hair Koka here. With the GSTL, uh, GSL, the color